this is Camille with Nuts and Bolts Speed Training, and this is part three of the series on how to create custom PowerPoint templates from scratch, where you watch behind my shoulder as I build one from beginning to end. Now in this part three, we're going to edit the child layouts in the slide master. So everything that is beneath the parent slide, which we've already formatted. If you've missed those two sections, make sure you click on the button here on the screen so you can see how we started out. You definitely don't wanna start just from here. So the first thing we're gonna do in this next step is we are going to format a few of the child layout slides. I won't show you all of them because this will take quite some time, but I will show you a couple, especially the first few that are the most important and you can see how I would go about creating them. So the first thing that we're gonna do, the first one we'll edit is this uh, title layout, title slide layout. And this one's gonna look fairly different from the other layouts. Um, so we are going to actually want to remove some of the elements that we added to the parent slide, but that's okay because we're gonna format it uh, further and you'll see exactly what I mean. So this title slide, we will not want to have the, uh, the logo visible. We won't want to have the uh, same background and orange re rectangle element here. And we also will not want to see the footers. So what I'm gonna do to remove that instead of uh, removing the footers, deleting them, like we always say we shouldn't do, don't delete things because if someone inadvertently adds it back in or wants to use the footers, you wanna have it formatted properly. Um, we're, we're also not going to, what some people do, they try to hide the background by adding a white rectangle. I don't know if you've seen this before. Uh, if we send backwards a few times. This is what people will do to try to hide the background elements. So I'm gonna delete this. Actually, what you can do, the better way to do this is to go up into the Slide Master tab and select Hide Background Graphics. If you do that, you'll notice that the, uh, the, the pattern fill in the background, the logo, anything that's not a placeholder that was set on the parent slide layout is going to be removed. Um, but you can easily add it back in by unselecting that little checkbox. So we'll remove the background elements, but we still wanna have this, this continuity with the theme here going. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the parent slide and I'm gonna move this out of the way a bit and select this pattern image. I'm gonna hit Control C to copy it onto my clipboard and Control Z to move that rectangle with the gradient fill back. Once this image is on my clipboard, what I can do is I can either control V to paste it in here and send it all, to, all the way to the back and just, just have it in here as an image if I wanna to continue to manipulate it. Or if I know for sure I'm gonna use it and I don't want anyone to be able to touch it, what I can do is right click the slide, hit format background and go to picture or texture fill and select clipboard. That essentially pastes what was on my clipboard, which was had this pattern fill because I had hit control C and it puts it as the slide background, which means it is no longer selectable. As you can see, I cannot edit it any further. Now, again, you want to do this at the very end once you know for sure that that's the image you want to use. Um, but that is a, a simple way to have a background that is not does not get warped by the user down the road. Now the next thing I want to do is add a, a bit of a design element here to match some of the, the theme I have going on here with the, re with the orange rectangle. So I'm going to draw in a rectangle here and I'm going to position it in the middle and in the center and I will send it to the back. I can send it to the back now because this pattern here is actually a slide background and not an image. Once it's positioned here, I'm going to select my two placeholders, oops, control Z and I will make the font white. I might even uh, adjust the positioning of these placeholders here. I might make my subtitle space a little smaller, title space a little bit bigger, and roughly position it that way. You can make any further changes as you'd like. You can add some design elements. I'm gonna leave it as is because I like a very clean uh, a clean title slide for this presentation. My last step here is to uh, remove the footers. As I mentioned, we're not gonna delete them. We're gonna simply unselect this footers, uh, this little footers tick box here so that they disappear. And if someone absolutely needs to use them again, they will pop up and they'll be formatted correctly. They don't exactly fit this layout, but they'll be here and they'll be in the right, uh, the right format. Now, uh, you might notice that uh, I've deleted the guides, but I actually haven't deleted them. I've just hidden them from view. Uh, I did this in between filming here. So the guides checkbox here is unselected, but they're still there. So because we're not on the parent slide, we're on the child slide, we can't actually edit these. 
uh, which is good because they just sit in place and we know where our bleed space is and we know how much room we have. In this particular layout, it's not absolutely uh, necessary to have them because the layout is quite different from the, the standard one that I've formatted up here. Um, but you can see that they're still here and you can select and unselect them to view them. So once we've edited this title slide, the next one is to go and edit the most commonly used slide that's going to be in your presentations most likely is the title and content layout. This is the one that looks, it's going to look almost identical to the one you set here and chances are you're going to want to keep it the same, but there are a few things to keep in mind that you might want to change and do differently. The only thing that I'm going to do differently for this layout compared to the parent slide is I'm going to add another design element here. I'm going to add a line and to draw in a straight line, make sure it's 100% straight every time, simply hold the shift key as you draw it in. So I'm holding shift and drawing it in and it's 100% straight. You'll notice it's straight because I have a zero height. Uh, once I've drawn it in, I'm going to place it here, uh, right underneath my title. It should snap because of the smart guides aligning to the guides that I've already created. I'm actually going to make this a little bit longer, so I'm going to increase it here so that it goes to past the text roughly. And that's the only thing I'm going to do to this slide. I'm going to add this little design element so that um, I have, you know, just kind of a symmetry going on here. But again, you can make any changes you want to this layout. And the reason that I didn't add this line, by the way, to the parent slide is actually this parent slide needs to work for, for the majority of the layouts that you're going to have here. And further down the road, I'm not going to want to have that line appear. So for example, uh, in, in this slide, maybe I don't want to have the line or further down the road. For example, in a blank slide, I want to have the background, but I won't want to have this line here sitting in the middle of nowhere. So this parent slide is going to be relatively bare bones and you can always add elements in the child layouts as you go. Okay, so for the rest of this presentation, I'm also going to format each one of these individual uh, slide layouts to match the kind of content that I'm going to have in each of those layouts. Here, for example, we have a divider slide. So the rectangle here matches the design elements here in the slide, uh, the title slide layout. We also have a custom layout that I've added. Uh, this is, for example, a, uh, an agenda slide or a table of content slide. I've added this in because this is an element that is going to be used frequently in, these, in these, the presentations that use this template. So I've gone ahead and customized it so that someone can easily, uh, easily edit it and have uh, continuity across the template. This presentation you'll notice is called Custom Layout Layout. So this was added in as a child layout. You can do that by hitting Insert Layout here. Control Z to undo, or by right-clicking and insert layout. Now, once you've done that, uh, you can format it as you like, and you can also rename it by re-clicking it, by right-clicking it, sorry, hitting rename and changing it to, for example, agenda layout, or just agenda. Um, now, this presentation is called agenda layout. So you can do that for all kinds of custom slides that you know you're going to use. If you have something that's a very set format, a set layout that's going to be used multiple times in a presentation or very frequently, I would highly recommend creating a custom layout for it. For, um, examples include, you know, a team slide with pictures and, uh, and job functions. You can have a custom layout for case studies, for contact us, uh, for a number of different, uh, different slides, but Try not to go overboard, obviously, because you don't want to have a, a, a layout area that's too packed full of slides because that's going to confuse the user. Uh, they won't be sure necessarily which slide to use. But again, if you have very frequently occurring slides, I highly recommend making your own custom one if it doesn't already match one of the existing layouts. So beyond that custom one, I've gone ahead and just edited the default ones that appear in the default slide master area. So we have the content with the subtitles, we have a blank with a title, a blank completely blank, and we have the rest of them here as you can see. So I've gone ahead and formatted all of these. They're not terribly different from one another. The main different ones are the custom ones and the, uh, the title and divider slide layouts. Now, before you save your presentation, there are a few other things that you might want to keep in mind. One thing is, as I mentioned earlier, do you want these backgrounds to be editable, these shapes, or do you want to hard code them so that someone can't format them uh, if, and, and make adjustments to them? If you want to hard code them in, what I would recommend is selecting all of them together 
cutting it out and then pasting it in as the slide background as I showed you earlier how to do. Um, another thing that you want to keep in mind is you want to, uh, you might want to look into the paragraph spacing. So uh, we didn't play around with this because I, I was set with the way I wanted it to be, but you also want to play around with uh, any kind of spacing that you think might need to be adjusted in this presentation template. Another thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to adjust the animations and the transitions. If you have any set animations and transitions you want to have appear, uh, I would do that here. You can go out of the slide master and select this, go to transitions, and select, for example, fade, if you want the fade to appear for every single transition uh, on every single slide, or just select none to make sure there are no transitions that are going to be coming along with this, with this template. And as always, there are a few steps that you want to make sure to go through before you distribute your presentation and save it. Uh, those include, you know, trying to break it, trying to type in all kinds of dummy text and deleting things and having them reappear and seeing what, uh, seeing what pops up. Um, one last thing to point out about the blank layout, I'm going to go back into the slide master that I didn't point out earlier. This blank layout has no title, but again, we didn't delete the title, we simply unselected it. So that's just another thing to keep in mind, but something you want to play around with when you're trying to break your template to see what happens. Uh, you know, if you, if you deleted it instead of hitting title, um, and then you paste in a slide from a different template, what happens? So all kinds of things like that, that you want to be able to, to do uh, with your template to, to try to break it and to see what happens. The last thing that you want to think about doing in the slide master area, if I go to view and slide master, is you might want to consider adjusting the prompt text. You'll notice in this default, uh, sorry, in this custom layout that I added, I've typed in the words type in item here. These are placeholders that I've added by going to insert placeholder and gone to text and I've removed the bullet points. Um, and I've typed in some different dummy text so someone knows exactly what to add and I've put a, a, a hash a number sign here so someone knows what needs to be put into this rectangle. So if I close the slide master view and I go to new slide and I insert the agenda slide, you'll notice these things um, appear here. Type in item and here number. So I know exactly, well it should be one, I know exactly what to type in. So that's going to be something that's super helpful for the user, uh, letting them know exactly what needs to go into each, into each element. And you can adjust the dummy text by going to the slide master and just typing it in here. The default says click to edit, edit master title, um, but you can, you can type whatever you like in here. So um, you can do that here, you can do that for the footers, uh, you can do that also here in the um, parent slides that it carries across throughout. So for example, you could say um, tagline goes here. You can even be very descriptive. You can say you know, font size t 10, uh, you can say, you know, small caps, but you get the general idea. You can type whatever you want to type in here to prompt someone to type in the right kind of text and to make sure that they're using the uh, slide master properly. So that wraps up this series on how to build custom PowerPoint templates from scratch where you watch behind my shoulder as I built a custom PowerPoint template from beginning to the very end. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. That lets us know that we should keep on making videos like these because you'd like them. If you could let me know in the comments what you thought, if you have any questions, if you like this format. This is the first time that I create a video for our YouTube channel, so I'm super excited to share it with you and I look forward to hearing what you think. This is Camille with Nuts and Bolts Speed Training and I'll see you at happy hour.